the species Persian clover uh, is from the Iran area originally. Uh, so Middle East, it, so it's uh, kind of an interesting species. So it, it's, you know, bred to be fairly drought tolerant. You know, what makes it unique though, is it's also very small seeding uh, compared to some of the other clovers like a crimson or a burst seam. It's more similar to in seed size to that of the balanza clover. So from a seeding rate, uh, really you need to be in that five to eight pound range, depending on uh, how you're gonna seed it versus crimson, you're probably gonna wanna be in that 20 plus. So we anticipate this being some co good cost savings. Uh, nitrogen productivity at the Mississippi State Trials, it was right in there with the best crimson clovers. Um, not as good at fixing nitrogen as say the fixation balance of clover, which really, uh, rules the roost and is the top dog as far as nitrogen fixation goes amongst annual clovers. When you, as soon as you start to go to flower, the nitrogen content in the plant starts to migrate to the seed for seed production. So you really wanna cut it before it goes to flower. That's when your peak nitrogen is gonna be. If you can time it and get it right at first flower, like right about now, this is probably peak flower. You see some of these are just starting to bloom. Uh, the rest of this field will be blooming here in about another 10 days, I'd say, for the most part. This will be a solid pink color, but uh, it's going to put out quite a bit of nitrogen. You don't have to worry about it because it's later maturity getting away from you and creating a weed bank, even if it did have hard seed, because you've got that extra window. So crimson might be this high right now, but it'd be in full bloom. This, you get the same amount of biomass, but you've still got a couple weeks. If you get held out of the field from a rain event or something like that, you're not gonna have to worry with this product like you would crimson. You've got a, a good grace period there where you can terminate it and still get that nitrogen. You don't have to worry about it going south because a thunderstorm rolled in and made it impossible to get out to the field. So the Persian clover was part of our initial breeding project. When we started looking at nitrogen fixation many years ago, we evaluated several thousand different uh, cultivars, uh, ranging from about 30 different species. Persian was one that we were excited about. Uh, you know, it's pretty impressive as you can see as a plant, so we like the looks of it. We tested stuff very early on for cold tolerance in Northern Iowa. And the Persian clover at that time was actually better than the uh, parental clones to fixation balanza clover. We think it's gonna be right at home on sandy soils. Uh, we, we've been putting a lot of work in it, trying to get a little bit better seedling vigor, which we think we've accomplished. And we think it's gonna fill a niche between the Balanza clover, which fixation is really good on wet soils, we think this is going to be more for the drier end of the soil spectrum. Um, it'll tolerate wet soils, but probably not as well as the fixation, more similar to that of frosty bursine. Have we done any forage analysis? Yes. Uh, it's not as high as the fixation balanza clover, more similar to that of a crimson, a little bit higher. Uh, Crude proteins ran anywhere from 18 to 24%. It's very digestible, but uh, we think it'll be a good forage. It's got pretty good nitrogen content. It's gonna be breaking down that nitrogen because of the, the, the great ability of the stems and whatnot. So that's gonna all become available to that next plant in probably the first you know 60 to 90 days. So it's gonna be a real boon for people that are following it with corn, it's gonna produce a lot of the nitrogen that it needs. You know, in initial indications is we're gonna be able to easily, you know, predict that it's gonna get 90 pounds of nitrogen, which is quite the payoff for a small seeded product like this. It's got a high crude protein content. Um, as you can see, looking at the stem, it's hollow. They're gonna be able to eat the entire plant. Um, you know, you can just kind of see how much moisture that's in there. You know, that's going to be a highly nutritious, highly digestible forage. Um, so it'll be a favorite amongst wildlife. One thing that makes it unique versus all the other clovers 
It's got this pretty pink blossom, but the fragrance is as good as any perfume out on the market. It's very fragrant. You can smell this thing for, oh shoot, an eighth of a mile away. Um, so, you know, part of our thought thinking is that might also be desirable to wildlife. They smell that, they're gonna smell that blossom. They're gonna know it's digestible forage and they might be attracted to, to the fragrance. Um, meanwhile, you know, from a neighbor's standpoint, they're gonna like it as well. You know, it's just great fragrance.